In this tutorial we will cover populating terrains with Gaia procedural biomes. We'll look at what comprises a biome, the spawners, resources and mask rules. We'll also look at the variables such as sea level and global spawn density that let you tailor the biomes to your own purposes. Let's create a simple terrain and biome to begin. Open the Gaia Manager, Control G. Select Small, Powerful Desktop and click Create Terrain. We advance to the second section of the manager. Select Gaia Pro Sample. Click the plus symbol to expand the biome setting rollout. A biome is simply a collection of spawners, and here we see the list of spawners contained in the Gaia Pro Sample Biome. The biome contains information as to how the spawners are triggered. The P column denotes if a prototype of the spawner's resource will be added to the terrain when the biome is added to a scene. The B column refers to spawners that are active in the biome inside the scene. You may note on some biomes there are inactive spawners such as snow textures or game objects that are optional or require custom tweaking based on the style of terrain that you have in your scene. The S column refers to which spawners are activated in the auto trigger section of the stamper. After each stamp operation is performed, the active spawners will be automatically triggered. Since the first spawner of any biome is generally the texture spawner, it is very useful to have this active to visualize how your terrain operations affect the resulting textures. We'll use the default settings. Click Create Tools. In the Stamp Browser, select Hills, 2K Hills 2, and click Apply. Scale a stamp up to around 300 and position it with a section of the terrain underwater. Expand the advanced rollout. Expand auto triggers. Here you can see the spawners that will run after each stamp event. Click Stamp. Turn off Preview. Select the biome in the scene hierarchy. Spawner range is based on the size of the terrain. A 512 terrain requires a range of 256 for full coverage. Sea level determines the water level. And the global spawn density attribute controls the number of objects spawned. If the rock spawner was set to spawn every 10 units on a 512 terrain, the result will be 51 by 51 or 2601 rocks. If we set the global spawn density to 2, the rocks would spawn every 5 units, resulting in 102 by 102, or 10,404 rocks. Let's take a closer look at the spawners. A spawner is a resource and set of rules that determine how the resource is distributed across your terrain. A resource can be a texture, game object, terrain detail, terrain tree, or probe, and can be comprised of a single asset or a collection of assets known as a layout. Select the Gaia Pro Sample Texture Spawner. In the Inspector, we can see the same attributes, range, sea level, and density. Spawn Mode lets you add, replace, or remove assets. Random Seed. When Generate is checked, the seed value will be randomly generated on each spawn. Each distribution pattern will be unique. Under Spawn Rules, select Sand, or click on the plus symbol to expand the rollout. We can see there are no rules. Click the Enable Visualization button, the eye icon. The terrain is flooded with the color of the previous swatch. Click the color swatch and modify the color. Turn off the visualizer and expand the resource settings. Here we have the settings that determine how the terrain material is created. Set size X and size Y to 10. Click Refresh on Terrain. Collapse Sand and expand Grass. Turn on the visualizer. We're going to recreate this mask. Delete the last two rules and expand the first height mask. We have a lot of flexibility in how we create these masks. In this instance, we'll use relative to sea level and percent. This biome was created with a sea level of 25. The sea level is currently 12.5, but the texture masks have adjusted because the mode is relative. Increase the second value to 10. If we think of the area of distribution as a grayscale image map, the green area we are displaying is the white area of the map. 
Click the plus symbol to add another mask. Set the type to noise. Notice how the mode is set to multiply and the noise is eating away at the distribution area because it is multiplying the black over the white area. Step through the modes and note how they interact with the distribution area. Notice in this instance that multiply and smaller than produce the same result. We can invert the strength curve to invert the noise map. Set the mode to add. Expand the preview, transform and type. Set the noise type to Voronoi. Using the middle mouse wheel, zoom out until the value is around 70. Set the amplitude to 0.8 and persistence to 0.6. You can also click on the preview directly and drag the noise around. Open the strength transform and soften the curve. Select the two midpoints, right click and select flat. Lock the noise and collapse the rule. Duplicate the height rule. Drag it below the noise rule and expand the rollout. Grab the widget on the minimum maximum height slider and as you drag it to the left, we can see it cropping the noise. The area between the min max slider is a blend from 0 to 1 on the height mask curve, where 0 corresponds to the minimum value on the strength transform and 1 is the maximum value of the strength transform. This blend is controlled by the height mask curve. Open the height mask curve and click the S preset. Select the two midpoints and manipulate them to sharpen or soften the blend. We can soften the blend area by dragging the max cap of the slider to the right. Expand stone cover and turn on the visualization. Expand stone slope and turn on the visualization. We have two slope rules here with ranges from 5 to 15 and 10 to 50. Let's look at stone cover. Turn off stone slope. Click the slope mask curve. The minimum value is 5 and the first point of the curve is 0. Therefore the amount of texture being applied here is 0. The second point is at point 1. That's one tenth of the curve along x. The range is 10 degrees. Therefore the second point represents 6 degrees and is applied at a value of 1. We can control this blend by moving the point along x. We can apply a different value than 1 by modifying the strength curve. If we look at stone slope, we see that the range is slightly different. Set the range from 5 to 10. Notice that the slope mask curve is not open-ended. It returns to 0. This tells Gaia that the maximum value of the range should have the texture applied at 0. This punches a hole in the distribution area where the angles are greater than the maximum value. If we raise the last point, you can see the hole is filled in, as in all the points after the maximum value are included in the mask. Set that back to 0. Set the range back to 10 to 50. Click Spawn Local. I'm going to skip the large and medium farms. Select Small Farms and uncheck Small Farm 3, 4, 5 and 6. These will no longer be active in the spawner. Activate the visualization. The mask rules in the two farm spawns are height and strength. But we also have masks in the header of the spawn. The mask in the header takes precedent and the combined output of the individual rules are multiplied together to produce the result. Turn off Small Farm 2. Click Spawn Local. Turn on Small Farms 2 and activate the visualization. We can see that it no longer looks the same. The collision mask detects that the Small Farm 1 asset has the PW Building tag and updates the collision mask. This update will occur before each spawn rule is run. This is how we can avoid objects intersecting. 
turn off Generate and click Local Spawn. Select Gaia Pro Sample Rock. Expand Terrain Texture in the Mask Settings of the header. We have a list of the textures. We can restrict the distribution to only spawn on this texture, or by inverting the strength curve, we can remove this texture from the distribution area. Let's simplify this rule so it's easier to see what is going on. Turn off all masks. Change max increment to 35, jitter to 0, and minimum fitness to 0. Click Spawn Local. The minimum location increment is 35. On a 512 terrain, that is a maximum of 225 rocks. Select the rock spawner and expand the clear spawns rollout. Check game objects and set the from any source to only this spawner. Click clear spawns now. Set the maximum location increment to 20. This results in 26 by 26 or 676 rocks. With all masks off, all points are valid. Turn the masks on again. The visualization shows that not every point of the terrain is valid. Since the spawn mode is set to replace, we don't need to clear the spawns after each operation. Click Spawn Local. Now increase the minimum fitness to 90% and spawn. We've now reduced the amount of assets distributed to the visualization areas that are displaying as solid. Anything with less than 90% opacity will not be valid. Set the minimum fitness to 25%. Set the maximum location increment to 70 the minimum to 35, and spawn. As the fitness reduces, the location increment transitions to the maximum value. We have a good number of rocks, but they are spawning in a regular grid pattern. Let's turn the jitter up to 60. I like where the rocks are being distributed, but I want more. Expand the resource settings. Expand prefabs. Increase the minimum instances to 2 and the maximum to 6. Spawn offsets to minus 5, plus 5 in X and Z. Turn off rotate to slope and set the max rotation offsets to 359. Set the scale to fitness randomized 1, 4, and 20%. Open the scale by distance curve and set the endpoint to 0.3. Use the scale multiplier attribute to change the overall scale. Click Spawn Local. Terrain Trees. Select Gaia Pro Sample Tree. Expand the rules, turn them all off, and turn on the visualization. Our terrain texture is excluding the trees from the sand. The height mask has a belted height mask curve restricting assets to between 2 and 80% above sea level. The collision mask is taking into account the buildings. We will add another rule to include the rocks. Click the plus symbol, set the type to tag, and select PW Nature. Set the value to 2. If you want to remove a rule, click the double lines on the left of the entry, and click the minus symbol. 
When using your own assets, select the prefab in the project window and set the tag. In addition, in the individual spawn rules, we have a slope mask with a closed end mask curve and a noise mask to punch some holes into the distribution area. Click Spawn Local. Expand the rule and resource. Click Switch to Stand In. This feature lets you easily find your asset in a forest. Disable Stand In. To reduce the overall number of masks that we need to manually tweak, we could replace that slope mask with a terrain texture. Stone Cover had a similar slope mask, so the resulting distribution will be suitable for removing trees from steep terrain. Switch the slope mask to Terrain Texture. Click Reset Texture Selection. Select Stone Cover. Invert the Strength Transform. Now when we make a change to the texture spawn, we automatically update the tree rules. Terrain Details. Select Gaia Pro Sample Grass. Expand the rule. Detail density controls how many assets are distributed on each patch. Fade out fitness is the point at which the detail distribution begins to thin out. It must be set higher than the minimum fitness value. Click Spawn Local.